morning students. So now I think we get up with the four students. And uh, we will uh, can you hear me? Please uh, message on the uh, chat. Can, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we start with today's lecture. So today's topic is uh, network theory. Uh, first, we will take the normal class. What is the class? How the kidney normally look? Uh, so, this is a cut section of the kidney, and there will be a capsule, and this is a coffin, and inside that, you can see the medulla. Okay? So, this is a normal kidney. Now, we will see the microscopy. So, this is a normal microscopic structure. So, now we can see this is in the center, this is a glomerulus, and inside the glomerulus, there are capillaries. Capillary movement we can see, and they are lying by the mesial membrane. And in between, there are mesial cells. Okay, so this is a mesial matrix. And now we can see these are the tubules. Okay, so these are tubules by the tuberous epithelium. This is a normal histology of the tissue. Now we will see how the one-glomerular cells will look. So this is the transverse section. This is horizontal section of the glomerulus. So this we can see this is a complete glomerulus. Inside there, there are the capillaries. Capillaries are lined by the endothelial lining. And then yellow are the photocytes. Okay? So photocytes are very important in the influx. Uh, this is uh, filtration process. And these blue cells, they are the mesenchymal cells. And this is the apparent arterial. And then we can see the apparent arterial. And this is the distal tubule. Which is lined by the tuberous epithelium, and these are the macular lymphatic cells. Okay, and the juxta globular cells are greenish in color. So, this is now, now how the transfer section of the globulus is. So, now these are the capillaries lined by the endothelium. The yellow are the photocytes, and these are the photocytic photocyte processes which we can see. And uh, there is a basal lamina, which is blue in color, in between the photocyte cell processes and the endothelium. So this is the transfer section of the Now this is a in the electron microscopy structure, and we can see the basement membrane with the lining endothelial cell lining. RTCs are inside the capillaries, and they are the and these are the mesial cells. Okay. So now the next step. Now we can see the photocytes. How photocytic processes will look. So this is the basement membrane. Inside that, this is the endothelial lining, and these are the photocytes. So and in between there are spaces. Okay. From this spaces, the filtration will take place. So depending upon the charge of the molecule or the size of the molecule or the weight of the molecule, their cells will come out from this. This is a normal, normal structure. Now when there is an epithelial cell detachment, okay? so the basement membrane is disturbed. This is uh, epithelial cells will detach because of some antibodies or cytokines. So because of this, more amount of uh, uh, plasma protein or uh, RBCs will come out from the epithelial detachment. And that will come into the nucleus. So this is a normal structure and this is abnormal because of any antibody or cytokines. So we will see in any glomerular injury. Results in the impairment of the glomerular filtration. There will be disturbance in the filtration, and because of that, there will be plasma proteins and blood cells in the urine. This is a normal glomerular injury. So now the glomerular injury either nephritic or nephrotic. If you say it is nephritic, so nephritis is inflammation. So there you will get more amount of RBCs in the urine, and nephrotic you will get more amount of blood. So where we are going to see the nephrotic symptoms. What is the nephrotic syndrome of this? It is a, the many glomerular diseases which can cause the nephrotic syndrome. So, what are the manifestations when we will say the patient is having nephrotic syndrome? 
So there should be massive protein media. What is protein media? There is an amount of protein, more amount of protein will be present in the urine. What is the amount should be? It should be more than or equal to 3.5 grams. And because of the protein load, the body will have less amount of protein in the serum. So there will be less protein in the serum. So there will be hypoalbuminemia because albumin is the most main important protein which will be uh, separated from in the urine. So there will be hypoalbuminemia and the plasma albumin level will be less than 3 grams. Because of this loss of uh, albumin and protein, there will be generalized edema in the body and there will be hyperlipidemia and lipidemia. More amount of lipid will be produced and that lipid, that is the triglycerides or lipoprotein, it will be excreted into the urine. So there will be lipid urea. There is a derangement in the glomerular capillary wall, which results in increase the permeability of the plasma protein. So more amount of plasma protein will come out into the urine. Now what is the next microphone common common gesture? So now what is the nephrotic syndrome cycle? So nephrotic syndrome will have massive protein media. So massive protein media, there will be popular uh, M square plus uh, per R. Okay. So that will be 50 mg per kg per day of protein will be excreted into the So this is my massive protein media. Second is hypoalbuminemia. So what is the hypoalbuminemia? There is less of uh, less of albumin in the body that is less than 2.5 grams per day. These are the two important conditions. Now the third is hypercholesterolemia. Please switch off your mic. Introduction. The fourth condition is with or without edema. So there will be edema, there will be present or absent, and lipid urea because extra amount of lipid will be excreted. So this is a classic symptom criteria. There are four points you should remember. See the classification. So what is the etiology? This is primary, the 90% of the necrotic syndrome will have primary glomerular abnormality. And the causes are idiopathic that we don't need. The secondary mm -hmm. is part of renal involvement in the different diseases. That leads to necrotic Then there will be membrane of chronic residual glomerulonephritis, and there will be focal 
segmental glomerulosclerosis and there is a messenger proliferative glomerulonephrosis and IgA necrosis. These are the neurological factors of the primary necrotic syndrome. So there are many infections which can lead to necrotic syndrome or drugs, drug intake or neoplasia, multi-system diseases, then and are a condition which can lead to secondary necrotic syndrome. So infection, post the total neurotic syndrome, endocarditis, then shunt lepsitis, secondary syphilis, leprosy, hepatitis B, AIDS, infectious mononucleosis, malaria, cystosomiasis, and filariasis. These are the infections which can cause neurotic So what are the drugs that can cause neurotic syndrome? Now, what are the 
clinical features. So the age of the patient in the minimum change is one uh, patient will be 85 to 90 percent of the patients will be less than six years, and 30 percent adolescents may have minimal change in their condition. So onset is insignificant. And this patient initial episode and subsequent relapses may follow minor infection. Patient might maybe he had infection prior and after that he had developed necrotic symptoms. So there is a minor infection or infection or poison poison that can be caused for the necrotic minimal chain disease. Now, what are the clinical features? The minimal chain disease patient will have anorexia, irritability. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, and genitis itching. These are the generalized complaints the patient will have the diarrhea. So the urine will be sloppy, sloppy urine will be there because of the high concentration of protein. And the edema will be there. And because of that edema all over the body, there will be dyspnea because the fluid fluid will increase, that is called fluid excretion. So now we see the coffee urine yes, the patient will have kidney. And that is why the patient will come in have the complaints of dyspnea because of the fluid equation or laryngeal and the chest comfort because of the pericardial equation. Arthralgia because of the hydroarthrosis or abdominal pain because of the fluid will be accumulated in the peritoneal cavity that will be affected or in the children there will be medical edema will be seen. Edema may obscure the sign of muscle respiration and causes parallel white lines in the fingernail bed that is also called as a muscle spline and the patient will also have uncommon, uncommon clinical features like hypertension and gross hematuria. Hematuria is generally we will see nephritic symptoms. So, nephrotic syndrome hematuria is not commonly seen. Now, we will see what is the, uh, how we have to grade the protein area of the patient. So, if we have to grade, we have to do the urine routine examination, and in that, we have to count the how much of the protein is present. So, according to that, we will grade as 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, if the patient has less amount of protein in the urine, that is 50 to 100 mg per year, then we grade as 1 plus. If it is 101 to 360 plus 301 grams per year, so that is 60 plus. And if the urine will have more than 2 grams of protein, then we can just go to mechanism. So there will be loss of negativity charge. Protein and glycoprotein. So there negatively charged proteins will be or there will be increased size of food. So the space between the pores, that is photo size, will increase. There will be loss of food process. Sometimes the food processes will get, uh, get detached from the sebaceous membrane, or there is increased excretion or decreased absorption of the food. And there will be release of platelet factor in the glomerulus. So platelet factor will be released from the glomerulus, and there will be increased thromboxane produ production because of the protein loss. The body will try to produce more amount of other types of protein like that. Because, because of that, there will be more amount of thrombosis on the plant. So now, if it is, what are the, what are the types of protein will be lost in the urine? So albumin is first, and the very important protein which will be uh, present in the urine. Then there will be thyroxine binding protein. Then cholecalciferol binding protein will be present. Trans protein. Then metal binding protein. Anti-thrombin C, protein C, and S. all the protein will be lost in the urine. So because of this loss, there will be hypoproteinemia. The serum will have less amount of protein. So what is the cause? As there is increased loss, inadequate synthesis, and increased catabolism. These are the three causes. And in this necrotic sense, we will see hyperlipidemia. So what is hyperlipidemia? The cholesterol in the serum. So 
what are the which cholesterol BADL is more increased in the serum? There is a lot of lipoprotein lipase enzymes in the liquid. So this is an enzyme which degrades the liquid. So this gets excreted in the urine. So that is why the liquid gets carbohydrated into the serum. And the patient will have hypertension. There will be decreased conversion of BADL to LDL because of the decreased lipoprotein levels. The loss of upper lipoproteins in the urine, so more amount of protein will be uh, excreted into the urine and decreased level of HDL. HDL is a good protein, good lipid, which is decreased in the uh, hyperlipidity condition. At increased synthesis of lipoproteins, more amount of lipoprotein will be produced because the body has less amount of protein. This all leads to hyperlipidity. So now the patient will have heading. So what is the cause for it? Why the patient will have heading? So there is a massive protein, protein urea. So body will have less amount of albumin. So because of that, plasma on oncotic pressure will be decreased. So more amount of fluid will come into the intravascular compartment. In the facial space, uh, will have more amount of fluid. So there are two theories which will lead to edema. So first is underperiodical theory. That is because of the reduced renal perfusion. So more less amount of protein or fluid will go to the kidney. So kidney will try to produce more amount of uh, release and angiotensin aldosterone will more amount will be produced and because of that uh, there will be more amount of uh, fluid will be accumulated into the kidney and there will be reduction of intravascular volume which is which stimulates ADH. So this is underfill theory, other here is overfill theory because of there is a the excretion of sodium and water is defective. So uh, because the kidney is not functioning properly, so there is increased absorption of sodium water and with that more amount of fluid will get absorbed. So that will also lead to edema in the necrotic cell. What is the hypercoagulable state? So uh, in this patient, patient uh, they will have more amount of uh, coagulation will be more in this patient. Why? Because there is a less amount of serum albumin. So because less protein, uh, albumin is less, so urinary loss of antithrombin 3, factor 9, factor 10, factor 11, all will be get excreted into the urine. So these factors which inhibit the coagulation are now present in the body. So that is why there will be more thrombus formation. Thrombin activity will increase. Then there will be protein C, S activity or levels will decrease because they are also getting excreted in the urine. There is hyperfibrinogenemia. There is platelet activation increases and hyperlipidemia. So all these conditions will lead to hyperfibrinogenemia state. That, is, that means the body will produce more amount of thrombus. thrombus. Now, what are the idiopathic nephrotic symptoms? Idiopathic is a cause which are the uh, idiopathic is the cause we don't know. So DDs are protein using enteropathy, then hepatic failure, then CHF, acute and chronic glomerular nephrotic, and protein energy modification. So these or this condition also lead to nephrotic symptoms. So now we'll see the urine. So what are the findings we will see in the nephrotic patient? So routine examination, the patient will have sequence of protein, protein urea. Then the, if the 24 hour of the uh, urine of the patient is collected, then the protein will be more than 3 grams or 40 mg per square meter per hour. And the uh, urine excretion, there will be more amount of urine will be protein will be excreted, that is more, amount, more than 3.5 grams per day. So urine protein creatinine ratio, which we see in the patient, generally in the kidney disease, so that will increase. Because more amount of protein is excreted, but the creatinine is low. So that ratio will increase. Urine protein selectively, which protein is selectively seen in the urine is albumin. And in that, you see hyaline cast. Hyaline cast is because of the fat which are present and the protein which are excreted, they accumulate and they form a cast. So, hyaline cast is present in the urine. And microscopically, sometimes we see few RTPs in the urine. So, this is a normal. Chicken with 
blood examination if you do you see the serum cholesterol uh, because the lipids will be high the cholesterol level will be more than 250 mg per day then we need to do the serum albumin so the serum albumin during albumin will be more the serum albumin will be less that is less than 2.5 gram per day serum albumin globulin ratio which we calculate which is which will be reversed because the albumin will be low and globulin will be high so the ratio is reversed serum creatinine blood urea urine culture and sensitivity and serum cc and cc level will be normal in the laboratory so what are the what are the findings you will see in the topic paper in the blood sample cholesterol will be increased albumin will be decreased ag ratio will be reversed so there are the positive findings Minimal change disease, which is mainly seen in the children, and it is also called as food process disease or meal disease or nephrodia nephrosis. These are named for minimal change disease. It is seen in three months to sixteen years of age. When seventy-six percent patients will have minimal change nephrotic symptoms, and fifteen to twenty percent adults will have minimal change disease. Males are more male child will be more affected than the females. Highly selective protein urea. It is a highly selective. What is selective? You mean that is Only albumin is excreted. That is highly selective. Other proteins are also like uh, excreted, and it is selective protein. It's not a selective protein. Either. So in minimal change disease, we will see highly selective protein. Either. That is mostly albumin will be excreted. Microscopic hematuria. That is under the microscope, we can see herbaceous in the urine. That is called as microscopic hematuria. In 20% of the patients between of two to two to six years of age. is the most common cause of nephrotic in these children and sometimes it follows follows a respiratory infection or vaccination so it can be a triggering factor for the nephrotic and there will be increase in the patient with hodgkin disease so they are the severe symptoms of minimal change disease so now what is the etiology and pathogens so in minimal change disease the evidence indicate an immune mechanism so what is the cause there is antigen antibody reaction from this so this is the immune mechanism Involved in the minimal change disease, so immune dysfunction. There will be circulating cytokines will come to the human gland, and that will induce the disease epithelial cell, and that is why the protein is more among the protein will be excreted. Then some cases are caused by mutations in the genes, so there are the genetic factors which are responsible for minimal change disease, and that way that uh, that is the split like from protein will get disrupted in the mutation. Okay. What are the clinical signs of minimal change disease? Same, active proteinuria and mucus albumin. Minimal function in the food because the patient is only there is a problem in the basement membrane and filtration. So proteinuria is not functioning in food. There will be no increased BP or no minimal change. There is there will be no raised BP and blood heart disease will be absent in the urine. Only the albumin will be present in the urine. Most children exhibit a dramatic response to cortical stress. And this patient will have long-term problems. So problems from the blood circulation to the patient. So we are seeing this minimal change in this. So what is the morphology? How the kidney will look in this? It is called as a male disease because there is no kidney function. There is abnormal or normal or the cross with the kidney is anything normal. Morphologically also kidney looks normal. So it is called as male disease. So kidney is abnormal in size and shape. What is the morphology? On his own, his total body what we see the glomerular are normal by light microscopy. So we will see normal glomerulus. Then minimal deposition of the metal film. Metal film of matrix, material matrix will be deposited. Proximal tissues are often laden with lipid because there will be more amount of lipid. That is why lipid will be lipid will be stimulated into the proximal. That is why it is called as lipid nephrosis. There will be assessment of our processes. On electron microscope, so only finding we can see on electron microscope is assessment of the system. There will be no immunoglobulins or complement deposit on the immunoglobulin. Generally, in kidney, we do three things: light microscopy, that is HNA staining. Then we do electron microscopy and we do immunofluorescence to see which type of antibodies are present on the glomerulus. Uh, so these are the three uh, special uh, staining we do in the kidney for this function. The serum, serum forms in C3 normal, and circulating immune complex uh, complexes are absent. There is no immune complex deposition on the glomerulus, so there are no abnormality. Only the assessment of the processes, only possible finding which we can see on the glomerulus. There will be no hyper.
hypertension, new hypertension, BP, BU, and that is BDA, BRT, normally they Now, so microscopy, what follows we see, this is a normal glomerulus, which we have seen, and this is a messenger matrix. These are the capillaries, these are the porosite, the Bowman's capsule. So now these are the food processes. So there is an assessment of the food processes. You can see this, uh, the food processes we can see here, but in this, we, we are not able to see because these are the, there is an assessment of the food processes. So this is the only finding which is seen in the imaging imaging. So now we go to this is the electron microscopic picture of imaging degree. So this is a normal morphology. We can see those photosites. Okay, that there is a filtration gap between the photosites. This is the electron microscopic picture. So in this picture, there is assessment. So photosites are not looking normal. There is a disturbance in the photosites. Now we will see the uh, HM staining of this imaging uh, degree. So now this is a glomerulus, the capillary, from capillary, we can see this membrane. There is no abnormality. Everything is normal. Little bit messenger matrix. And in this, this is the silver state which we do for, to see the Bessman membrane. Okay? So this black line, which we see, this is a glomerular Bessman membrane, and which is absolutely normal in imaging. In other diseases, we can see the thickness. So the black line will be thicker in the uh, silver screen. But in minimal change, we are not seeing this. Now, uh, we have seen the etiology mainly mutations, and the secondary will be drug induced, that is, amicidins, defoncitin, interferon, lipoproliferative magnesium, HPA, febrin, cinthes, mialidoxy, diabetic mellitus, IG, lipopathy, heroin, or iron. Extra administration data can be the causes of emerging disease in adults. So, so, what is the treatment? So, in children, 30 to 40 percent recover spontaneously, so they don't need any treatment. Sometimes they need a steroid, idols of steroid for 80, and 90 percent of the patients respond to that. And so, in this patient, biopsy of the kidney, kidney biopsy is given uh, in adults to diagnose the cause. But we don't have to do it with invasive disease. In adults, 50% is for adults responsible, and 90% remission is there in 20 to 24 weeks we use of the steroid. And some cases, in 50% cases, it recovers if the steroid is stopped. If no response to steroid, then we set the suspect focal segment and the steroid. If there is, it is not responding to steroid. So, this is a minimal change in case. Sometimes we, in, instead of steroids, we give cytotoxic agents like cyclophosphamide and so on. But cyclos, uh, cyclosporine has a nephrotoxic effect and it has higher steroid rate. And the patient, if there is no response to steroids or the steroid dependent, requires higher dose of steroids and frequent elastic cleaning spray. 10 years survival in more than 90% of the patients. And rarely it is for a patient which are on the cytotoxic drug. They they need to go on a renal failure that is here. So now we have done this minimal PMC, which was in specially for the children and less amount of a patient will be added. So now we see membrane is glomerulus. So what is membrane is the most common embryonic syndrome in adults? Okay. So this is the primary membrane is glomerulus nephritis, reference nephritis, but second. So it's called primary. Caused by autoantibody. What are the autoantibodies that antibodies or the antigen? So autoantibody is directed against an antigen on the visceral epithelial cells of the clothing. Often directed against the phosphorylated AC receptor antigen on the food. So autoantibodies are formed against this antigen in primary membrane. And secondly, it's caused by the deposition of immune complex, that is, antigen antibodies get deposited. In some, it is seen in drugs that is penicillin, or anything Some malignancies, especially, especially of the CA breast, lung, colon, gastric, gastric carcinoma, melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, and rare malignancies may have melanoma, membrane glomerulosity. Then some infection that is hepatitis and syphilis. And Hashimoto's paralysis can also be seen in So it is rare in children. And clinical course will be patients in 30, in 30, 30 to 50 years of age, usually presented with nephropathy. It's important to rule 
have the secondary cost. So we have to find the cost for the secondary and then that is the middle of the Both 11 percent associated with the cancer is the patient is more than 50 years of age. There will be protein in India, but it is non-selective. So you mean non-selective, all types of protein will be produced. It is non-selective protein in India and does not usually respond well to cortical. We have seen that in minimal change, it is cortical surrounds well, this patient were responding to cortical. Day patients will not respond to that. And in this case, the typical patients are concerned, patients will have DDT, DT in this compound. And the pose is variable, so generally it's indolent, but it's subtracted. So, what is the protein area is probably caused by, and then it's one of the the protein area is probably caused by C5D and C9. These are the complement factors in this uh, immune system. So there will be damage to the visceral epithelial element. And we have seen the antibody, autoantibody. So there will be activation of epithelial and mesangial cells. Because of this, the epithelial cell is in the cell is active and they release of proteins and oxygen. And that will lead to capillary wall damage. So there will be capillary wall damage. So glomerular segment level, that is the capillary wall, becomes progressively thicker. Okay, and compresses the capillary unit. So there will be can see that. So, what is the morphology? How kidney will be? So, kidney will be enlarged because there is proliferation of the mesenchyme and the kidney will fail. And so, light microscopy is what we see the diffuse thickening of the glomerular capillary wall that is the vitamin and the thicker. And the over water vitamin and the duplication of glomerular vitamin and the so now what do we see electron microscopy that is black and white and gray color picture? So what do we see? Sub epithelial deposit. Okay. So there is a black deposit to be seen on sub epithelial layer. And the western membrane produced in the sub epithelial deposit. So we will see spike like projections on the electron microscopy and also in the silver stain. So now third is image of fluorescence which in which the VC green fluorescent light and we, uh, the, there is a the granular deposit of immunoglobulin and complement. But the complement level in the serum will be long. So this is the normal morphology of the membrane. So this is the picture. So this is the total membrane of the membrane. So now we see black deposit. Okay. So these are the uh, and the western membrane is thickened. Uh, GBM is thicker and they say that the spike projection, spike like projection. And this is green, this is immunofluorescence because of the deposition of immune problem. Now, this is the histology, so we can see the western membrane is thicker and uh, the spikes we cannot see in this uh, histology, but in, on the silver stain, we can see the silver stain thickening of this blackish line. This the line is thickened because of the thick vitamin and spikes uh, peak here. You can see the spikes in between. So now this is the thickened glomerular vitamin and then this is the past tense. So you can see the thickness and you can see this is the thickening of the glomerular vitamin. So the problem is of the NGA. 20 to 30 percent completely recovered without improvement. 25 percent patients in persistence will show protein media, but normal kidney function. And 20 to 30 percent patients will progress to protein. What are the four prognostic indicators that patients will not improve? Then the patient is old, the patients have the hypertension, then there is, there is severe protein media, that is more than 10 grams per day, it is specific. Hyperlipidemia is there. There will be worsening of the renal function if it is present. The renal function are abnormal and the patient will have cancer. The interstitial fibrosis. If we do the renal biopsy, if you see the interstitial fibrosis, then the patient will have bad cancer and they have to be in renal function. Now, one more condition we will see that is membrane is proliferative. Now, we have seen minimal change disease. And the uh, continue in the membrane is not the membrane is proliferated. Proliferation is more among the cell body and instability, but now it accounts for 10 to 20 percent of cases of metropic syndrome in children and young people. They have primary or secondary MPG, often present with combined metropic.
nephritic. Now we have seen nephritic is uh, the patients will have allergies uh, in the urine and hypertension can be caused. Or nephritic patients. So membrane proliferative glomerular nephritic patients might have nephritic or nephrotic issues. So there is protein urea, non selective. So non selective or uh, other proteins are also excreted. So maturia, that is adhesives will be present. Patient will have edema, hypertension, and azotemia is urea, you know, nitrogen is present in the urine. Mostly there are one third of the elderly uh, type, type 1 and type 2. Mostly type 1, so one third of the patient will have upper respiratory tract. There is hypocomplement CP, that is less, that is 70 percent of it. And there, there will be CP uh, nephritis factor, there will be decrease in the CP in the so now we will see what are the causes for the secondary antigen. So there are secondary causes, systemic causes like chronic immune complex disorder, like HIV, hepatitis B, C, subjective bacterial endocarditis, HIV, sepsis, malaria, plasmodium falciparum, cystic These are the causes which can lead to antigen. Some malignancies like PAM, lymphoma, and malaria, and some there will be dietary deficiency, hereditary dietary deficiency. So, what is the clinical course of the patient antigen? So, usually follow the slowly progressive. So, it is a slow progressive disease. Some patients will develop RPG, rapidly progressive lymphoma. 50% of the patients will develop CRS, that is chronic renal failure within 10. High incidence of recurrence in transplant recipients, especially with the type. So, this patient, if they undergo transplantation, then they can. The patient will show recurrence of the disease, especially in the type 2 MPD. This is the clinical case. Now we'll see the two types, type 1, type 3. So if one is type 1, there will be deposition of immune complexes within this activation of both classical and alternative component pathways. These are the two pathways which we see in uh, immune system, that is classical pathways, alternative. So both are present in type 1. Antigens which are involved in primary antigens are unknown. So now we will see what is type 2 antigen. So in type 2 antigen, there will be less amount of serum CC, factor B and proper D. But there will be normal level of C1 and C2. So because of the less amount of CC, there will be activation of alternative uh, complement pathways. So type 1 will have both, but in type 2 there will be activation of alternative complement pathways. So there will be more amount of so, 70% of the patients will have CC nephritic factor in them, and that, that will also activate alternate complement pathways. Now, this is a pathway which is seen. So, if there is a polysaccharide or endotoxin or IgA activation, they activate the CC, and the CC gets converted into CCD. So, this, this will alternate, alternate pathway will get active. So, this is classical pathway of CC converted. Uh, CC converted cleans the CC into CCA and CCB. CCC can then react to the factor B and B to form the alternate pathway. So, from alternative pathway, CC converted. And then the CCB can then further react with the alternate pathway, CC converted to form alternate pathway, CC converted. That is CCB. So, this alternative pathway which we see in this type 2 what is the morphology box we will see? So there will be alteration in the basement membrane. So basement membrane will not be the normal region. There will be proliferation of the glomerular cells. There will be endothelial cells will be proliferating more amount of endothelial cells, glomerular cells, leukocytes, that is WPCs will be present. And leading to increased cellularity of the mesenchyme. So that inside that glomerular cell, mesenchyme will be increased in size. And so the glomerula are enlarged, hypercellular and local. The glomerular capillary wall has double process that is splitting or tram track appearance. It's empty to project in the empty vein that is tram track appearance caused by the duplication of glomerular vessel membrane with mesenchyme and monitor in So, this gives me the diagram so you will understand the morphology. So, now we will see the what are the types monitor and screen. So, one what we have seen this is the the micro so in type permanency sub endothelial electron dense deposit. So, sub endothelial deposit, and there will be granular deposit of CC and often IgG1, C1, C2, 
normally type 2 there will be lamina densi extremely present in the uh, extremely electron density. So that is why it is called a dense deposit between because more amount of deposits will be present in the ice cream and CC is present in the global abutment membrane and mesomagenesia will look like a messenger ring and the IHE the D, C1, C2, and C4 are initially absent. So they were present in the ice cream. Type 3 is rare, it is electron dense because of endothelial, global abutment membrane, and Everywhere we can see the deposit and immunoglobulin and the antibodies will be present in C, IgG, and IgG. So, according to electron microscopy and immunoglobulin. So, now we see the mineral of laboratory, which is type 1, type 2. Type 1, the deposit you can see sub endothelium, that is, below the endothelium, we can see this black deposit. And in type 2, we can see that is inter, intra, that is, in between the basement membrane. So there are two types how we differentiate them. So this is a histology, the light microscopy. Type 1 and type 2 both, we cannot differentiate on histology. So this we can see the glomerular cellularity in C. Okay? Or glomerular and messenger cellularity in C. Now this is a special chain, the missing trichrome. So we can see the more thickening of the thickening of the glomerular vegetable membrane. And then this is silver stain, which in this is double contour, that is transgrad appearance. So this double, this the black line is, you can see the double or uh, black line on the double contour in GBA. So this is the transgrad appearance, transgrad appearance. So this is the transgrad appearance, this is the empty chain, and this is the immunofluorescence. This is messenger ring you can see. So immunofluorescence will look this fluorescent green light, which is red. Now, this is the electron microscopy. So, we can see the splitting of the basement membrane, which is not normal. So, the basement membrane is split in between and type 1. And there is demosidence deposit. Intra basement membrane, there is a deposit. It's far. It is sub endothelial and it is intra. Now, what is the diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis for MPGs? There is no effective therapy. There is a spontaneous recovery. Patient issue. Type 1 is benign, so patient is still surviving 70 to 85 days. Type 2 is variable course, compared to end state renal disease in 5 to 10 days. Now we have done the three diseases, narcosis, focal, and segmental glomerular sclerosis. So focal is, that means the focal part of the glomerular sclerosis. Segmental, that is segment of the tumor, so that is why it is called focal and segmental glomerular sclerosis. Sclerosis, there will be highland deposition or collagen deposition, that is why it is called as focal and segmental glomerular sclerosis. This is found in adults and in children of the tumor. So, it differs from the MCD, that minimal change, it will differ, differ from the minimal change disease by two things, that is, there will be non selective protein levels. In focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, all type of protein you can see in the region, but in minimal change, we have seen only albumin. As I said, GAS will have hematuria, albumin, and minimal change, there won't be albumin. Patients respond poorly to corticosteroids in the focal segmental, but corticosteroids is a treatment for minimal change. They patients will have a poor renal function, that is, media, fear, will be increasing number because the kidney is not functional. But in minimal change disease, it was also called a renal disease because the renal function was normal. This is often progressed to form a glomerular metastasis and develop end stage renal disease with focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. And minimal change disease recovers and it does not progress to any serious condition. So, what is that? This is there to be tubular interstitial damage seen in the focal segmental glomerular And this is patients in progress in the end stage. So now we will see what is the mostly primary, secondary causes are because of all the diseases. We have seen many of this AIDS, PM, FD disease, because we have to cut PC in our place. And uh, due to persistent glomerular capillary hypertension, either in the congenital oligonephropathy, that is, there is only one kidney, the congenital oligonephropathy, or part of the kidney is not developed properly. Acquired nephron loss. Why is it acquired? Either there is surgery and part of the kidney or kidney is injured, or there is 
they they get excreted into the urine. So there is iron, copper, zinc, and many deficiencies in this patient. Infection we have seen cerebral myelitis, pneumonia, or stroke myelitis, cellular arthritis. What are the factors responsible for infection? We have seen immunity loss of factor B in the global infection. So effective cell regulatory immunity, effective optimization. Then aseptic fluid is deficit present. That is a good concern we have to grow for infection. So there will be infection, peritonitis. And uh, some if the patient is on immunosuppressive drug was for the immune complexes, sometimes the patient has given immunosuppressive drug. So that will lead to infection. And malnutrition because there is no what are the complications due to treatment? So we are giving two treatments, as a steroid or cytopharmacopoeia. So because of the steroid, patients will have switching symptoms. Because in childhood, we are giving patients steroids. So they will have switching symptoms, hypertension, which is joint retention, osteoporosis, susceptibility to infection, which we have discussed, growth failure, cancer, glaucoma, gastritic, practical, practical, the hypopedemia, being able to change all because of steroids. And because of the cyclophosphamide, there will be immunosuppression and alopecia, hypopenia, infertility, and immunity, cystitis. Cystitis is bladder inflammation. Now, what is the prognosis of the hypopenia? Most uh, stop getting relapsed by the age of 11 to 15 years of age. Sometimes the patient will have full recovery. Many small population patients may develop late uh, dependency or resistance. And the mortality is in 1 to 4 percent of the cause of the secondary infection or high content. What are the variants for the flu? Pendulatal, finish type, or Danny Dash? Pendulatal is developed within three months because of the pendulatal disease for it. Finish type is the autosomal recessive disorder, and there is a mutation in THS1 gene. Is there any question? So, a finish type of any response to the that would be NPHS1 gene mutation or NPHS2 gene mutation. So, this will lead to renal failure. The patient will also have elevated alpha hydrochloroquine, lamiotic fluid, and maternal fluid. What is angiogram syndrome? It is associated also with patients who have used tumor, apophic syndrome, and congenital abnormality. And there will be diffuse mesangial sclerosis in this. Renal biopsy. Sometimes we have to do renal biopsy. So, what are the indications for the renal biopsy? The age of the onset. If the patient is of less than one year and he is suffering from necrotic syndrome, then renal biopsy is indicated. Or the patient is 15 years old and 15 years old. And the patient will show the uh, features suggestive of disease other than there is MCNS. So, anything other than MCNS that is macroscopic. Medicine. Macroscopic is naked eye, we can see. Um, blood in the urine. So that is macroscopic hematuria, hypertension, or low PC complement and penile failure. Then go for renal biopsy. If there is steroid non response, the patient is not responding to frequent relapses, patient is having relapses after stopping the or steroid dependence, or there is secondary steroid resistance and uh, prior cytotoxic therapy. If patient is in had any cytotoxic. Then we have to do the biopsy, and then we have to find out the cause of the necrosis. Then we have to do the 